And we're back. Technical difficulties, and we are back moving on. Um, nothing really to talk about with the Cowboys and Texans game besides the fact that Pollard uh, got back on track. Moving on, um, the fighting Rippians almost came back on the Chiefs. Um, Chiefs took the their foot off the gas pedal, which was very understandable after the stellar first half that they had. Yeah, they were and crushing the it. Broncos. Russell Wilson goes out with a, a concussion-like symptoms, and Brett Ripien, even though he played not as great stats-wise, somehow was moving the offense effectively. Yeah, Jerry Judy signing three touchdowns. He's had six. That yeah, he's only had like six touchdowns in his career, and he gets three this game. So, um, but Cortland Sutton out. Um, yeah, just kind of got back on track a little bit, but. The Chiefs do take care of business, trying to fight for that number one seed. Isaiah Pacheco, good game. Jarek McKinnon leads the team in receiving yards. Um, and Juju, nice game. Another down game for Travis Kelsey. Um, but Mahomes keeps finding the open guy. That's what he does. The Lions were favored going into this one, and they do answer the bell, taking out the Vikings. Who fall two ten and three? Yeah, it was more of the same from Amon Ross St. Brown and DJ Shark got in the mix. Yeah, Jamison Williams too. Their number one draft pick catches one. I mean, only one one catch, forty one yards, but does catch the touchdown. Um, on he Minnesota, now has one yeah. catch and one touchdown for the season. Yeah, um, on the Minnesota side, everybody kind of gets into the game. Justin Jefferson, 11 catches, 223 yards. Um, no touchdowns, but Thielen catches a touchdown. Osborne catches a touchdown. Cook gets a touchdown. Um, Je- Justin Jefferson's so damn good. It's It's been amazing to watch this year. The Eagles put the pressure on the Giants in the first half, and then they continued to apply pressure, unlike the Chiefs, against the Broncos. Um Jalen Hurts is top 10 in completion percentage so far this season. He does get a rushing touchdown, and Miles Sanders finds the end zone two times as long as as well as Boston Scott. A.J. Brown cooks his uh, former team. Or no, no, that was the week before. Um, ignore everything I just said. I didn't see any <laughs> highlights from A.J. Brown, but he did score a touchdown. He did. Was it a blown coverage? Uh, no, he just – out outwork somebody okay um richie james was the i uh the ire for daniel jones and tyrod taylor siding yeah tyrod taylor does throw the touchdown to richie james um bad game from barkley he was a listed questionable going into the game did not play a whole lot a lot more gary brightwell and matt breda so the giants are just kind of a, a shit storm right now um, started out hot. Kind of way met. more wins than they need to have. Yeah, they're mellowing out now. Going to be around that 500 mark. Um, but I want to know what it's going to take to beat the Eagles, like in the playoffs. Like I know the Eagles have a loss already, but it's they're pretty hard to beat. Like <laughs> that offense is really prolific. You know, you got Jalen Hurts on the ground, and he's also dishing it out to. Smith and AJ Brown and Quez Watkins and Dallas Goddard's coming back next week. And Miles Sanders is being so efficient on the ground. Yeah, it's going to be tough to beat. The Titans lose a divisional game. However, they stay at the top of the division. Um, I did not expect this at all. The Jaguars coming off of some injuries to Trevor Lawrence and some other people. Um, get the job done. Evan Ingram with the random insanely productive tight end day huge and day. a nice day for derrick henry yeah a lot of derrick henry's a lot of derrick henry's production was he had 96 yards and a touchdown in the first half so they definitely bottled him up in the second half um but for the jaguars they just took it to that uh, titan secondary their secondary is trash so obviously if you look at the running back stats they're not great because they they aired it out um, against them. Evan Ingram 
Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, they all got the job done. Uh, the Ravens win a game that I did not think they would, as the Steelers tend to win these divisional games at home, no matter what's going on. Uh, Mitch Trubisky? Yeah. Concussion for Kenny Pickett. Mm. Yeah. So we have Mitchell Trubisky versus Tyler Huntley, the Trubiscuit. And, and then Tyler Huntley got hurt, so it was Anthony Brown. At quarterback, it was just a game you did not want to watch. I did not want. They didn't show any of this game because all, both teams suck. Uh, a bright spot, J.K. Dobbins yep. does uh, get some production, and he is back. Yep, so much for easing him back in slowly. They just kind of give him the rock and let him take care of business. Okay. The Dolphins – um do not win against the chargers uh the fighting justin herberts are able to take care of business not a stellar game for tua tyree no. hill does find the end zone on it and does have a 60 yard catch i don't know if that was a touchdown or not yeah so um, he did get and yeah it depends on the scoring format for at least for fantasy he is credited with two touchdowns he did catch a 60 yard touchdown pass but jeff wilson also fumbled the ball at the at uh, at the fifty yard line, and Tyreek Hill picks it up and runs fifty yards for a touchdown. Um, if you do get the touchdown score, it's it's just a touchdown. You do not get the the rushing yards because it is not a designed play. You just get the six points. Um, every league scoring is different. I believe in ours, um, you get fumble recovery touchdowns. Um, so you just get the six points. You don't get the the five yards as a rushing because it was not a rush play. Um, but he's still credited with a touchdown. Okay. Um, Jeff Wilson gets hurt in this one. Raheem Mostert really doesn't do anything with it. As long as Jeff, Jeff Wilson is healthy and the game script is correct, I would expect both running backs to be more effective. Uh, Jeff Wilson probably has the clearer route to fantasy production. Mm -hmm. um, Keenan Allen has a crap load of targets, mm -hmm. and Mike Williams has a nice day. He's finally back off of injury. Eckler does Eckler things. He's one of the most consistent players in fantasy behind Justin Jefferson. Another um, matchup that killed a bunch of bank accounts, the uh Panthers beat the Seahawks and the fighting Geno Smiths. Geno Smith does have two interceptions. Um, the Seahawks just are not the same without Kenneth Walker, it seems. No. Um, Deontay Foreman and Chubba Hubbard got force fed the ball while Sam Darnold just, you know, dinked it around a little bit. Yeah, they're hiding Sam Darnold a little bit. Uh, DJ Moore goes out with you a need to. Oh, yeah. I mean, he might be in witness protection by the end of next week. So, um, yeah, DJ Moore goes out of the game. Um, if you haven't seen this play, though, um, is the Terrace Marshall catch, catch and roll. Um, catches it between his legs and rolls to to complete the process of the catch. And I guess you, to complete the process of the catch, you have to touch it with your hands. So as he's like – rolling with the ball between his legs at the very end, he touches it. And then it's like technically a completed catch. Um, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out. Very interesting play. Um, that's about the highlight of the day for the Carolina Panthers. Shy Smith gets in the end zone. Blowout in the after. Blow in the afternoon window. Um, Brock Purdy, Purdy takes care of Tom Brady first rookie quarterback to make their debut to also beat Tom Brady at the same time because that just does not happen when you play for Bill Belichick. Christian McCaffrey finds the end zone two times. Uh, his receiving touchdown was way nice, and Purdy did just enough to get the job done. Brock Purdy is 22 years old. Tom Brady has played in the NFL for 23 years. That is a good stat. That's a hell of a stat. It's crazy. Like, he's played in the league Did longer you... than he's been alive. 
Did you watch Monday Night Football? Negatory. Okay. Uh, we're in the same boat. Kyler Murray goes down on a non-contact injury. Yep. Uh, he has torn his ACL. He will be out for uh, an indefinite amount of time. Mm-hmm. James Conner finds the end zone. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins gets targeted out the butt, and so does Nelson Aguilar. But um, I don't even know how the Patriots scored their points. Um, but it doesn't Ke- matter because they win. Yeah. Um Kevin Harris and Pierre Strong Jr. are the ones that get the touchdowns on the ground. Ramondre Stevenson does go out of the game with an ankle injury, does not did not return. Both of those, uh, Pierre Strong and Kevin Harris are rookie running backs that they took late in the draft. Um, and with DeAndre, um uh Damian Harris, sorry, Damian Harris out as well. You know, got a couple young guys up and seeing what they can do after. Stevenson gets hurt. We'll see what see what that does in the next few weeks. Um, the Patriots still are on the cusp of the playoffs at seven and six, so we'll see how um, they work that out. But per- pretty tough for Kyler, like third play of the game, like non contact. That's tough to. That's tough for anybody. That is it for the matchups that matter. Oh, no, that is it for the IRL football. Now we move on to the matchups that matter. Yes, sir. And this was the final week of the regular season. There was a tiny, tiny bit of drama to end the day, but for the most part, there was none of the games really mattered. Uh, starting off with me, yes, I lose to Cole, and Cole goes all the way from eighth place up to fifth somehow. Tiebreakers, man. Yep, it gets you every time. Get you um, not really much to say it was a pretty poor performance for my team headed into the playoffs which was disappointing and uh cole had a bunch of people on by and he beat me that would go sometimes so it drops you to the eight seed um yep. which means you get the 11 game win streak any given sunday two time in cody sackett um, who ends up beating Lucas Stewart, 150 to 87. Uh, a lot of teams didn't show up this weekend, but Cody's did. Mm-hmm. Cody shows up every week, man. It's tough. Yeah. Tony Pollard. Oh, man, that Tony Pollard trade, man. He tried trading him to me at one point. I said no because I already had Zeke, but uh, that was pretty dumb. I could have just been starting them both. Yeah, pretty tough. Luke drops to the four seed with that loss. Um, Oof. he's yep. So then he's going to match up against Cole. So we'll have that winner. So that's the top half of the bracket. Um, Dalton and Sackett, or and then Luke and Cole. So those two winners will meet up in the semifinals. So one of those four teams will represent one half of the Suckup Cup, which I'm very excited because four of your division is on the top half of the bracket. Four. So all four of you in the same division, you can beat up on each other some more. Which means okay. the bottom half of the bracket. Um, the three seed is the brink. Dark horse takes down his brother, beats him by one and a half points, um, one point five two to be exact. Um, so Brinkman falls to three, which means he's gonna get Heath. Um, and then Heath ends up losing to Lean, um, which Lean, Lean did his best to sneak his way in. Um, good for him. Played Jarek McKinnon. I don't know how you fucking do that shit, but whatever. Um, and then the two seven matchup. Um, Blaster gets a win, knocks Drew down to seven. Good for Blaster to get off that that losing streak. Um, beats Drew by a little over three points. But again, drops Drew to seven and seven and the seven seed. And he takes on the number two seed, yours truly, the Goodell Boys Club. Um, I just lost Kyler Murray. That's okay. I'll rebound. <laughs> um, so um, I take down Patrick. So the bottom four... And just a little recap. Um, 
Sorry about that. Uh, the bottom four will be Lean, Patrick, Blaster, and Dark Horse. Um, I remember it's a two-week playoff yep. uh, to start for the loser's bracket. Yep, so the two-week playoff matchup will be Lean versus Patrick and then Blaster versus Dark Horse. So those will be um, a two-week matchup. I feel bad for Patrick too, man. Um, like he has Two crushed in it. A row now. Like he finished with seven hundred and seventeen ninety-six points, more than Blaster, more than Dark Horse, more than Lean, more than you, more than Drew, more than Heath, more than Cole. Tied Luke. Like he tied for fourth in scoring. Just ran into the buzz saws every single week. Um. Tough break. So, and he's the 12th seed. So he finishes last. Um, because, um, um, because everyone in your division finished six and eight, and then Blaster and Patrick tied four and 10. Blaster beat Patrick. Patrick finishes 12, and he's the fourth highest scoring team in the league. Tough break. Um, tough break for you, buddy. But, you got two weeks to prove that you're not a bad team and to put lean back in the toilet bowl. All right. Um, with that, I think you did the preview at the same time. Um, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So <clears throat> one half of the bracket. So it's a quarter final, which means eight teams per yep. side of the bracket. It is myself and blaster and lucas and cole on one half of the bracket and then you, you, you mean sack and not blaster you said blaster. yeah sorry <clears throat> then you have drew zach uh heath and brinkman on the other half yep so yeah we're down should on, be very entertaining down to the final three um final three weeks um see who can put their name on the suck up cup um Let's see how many league champions we got. See, Sackett's won twice. You've won once. I've won twice. Cole's been to a championship game. Oh, Brick has like been to a championship gotta... game. Yeah. Luke's the only one I don't think that's made a championship game. Heath. So your brother, Heath, and Cole, I believe. Or has Cole made a championship? Did Cole, he lose yeah. to you? Cole lost to me one year. So Drew, your brother... And Keith, this is Drew's first year in the playoffs. Congratulations! Um, no way, he's only been in the league three years. Your brother, no, Drew. Oh, I thought you said your brother. I was no, like, my brother's been brother. dominant, he just can't, he cannot get past the semifinals. But the elusive four five matchup, we've talked about it every year, the four five matchup has been dominant in the playoffs. So Luke, Cole, keep carrying on the tradition of a four or five. Uh, Dalton won last year as a four seed. I have won at a four seed. Patrick's won as a five seed. Uh, I believe uh, Sackett's won as a four or five seed. It's a pretty popular route. You know, you're you're most likely going to get the number one seed in the second round. The eight seeds only won once. Um, but that means you got a chance. Um, bold prediction the four or five will not end up winning this year. Ooh, will not. What do you think? Sackett's gonna run the table? No, I just think Cole's team is horrible, and your brother's, um, not been doing very well. Yeah, Luke started seven and oh, he finished what eight and six. His just his whole team just decided to glide into the playoffs, so we'll see. Yeah, it's crazy. We're down to the all right, the final stretch. Um, let's talk about the the bets from the bets from last week. I guess I swept you. <clears throat> no, you swept did you. not. Yeah, I didn't. Nope, absolutely not. I had the Chargers, I had the Texans, and I had the Rams. I had the Chargers. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. I'll double check. I 
pretty sure are the Chargers. Please do. Okay. Um, I believe it is. Yeah, it is definitely your week. Um. Yeah. I don't know how we always mess up one. I I write them. I go back and listen to it the next well, morning. You always mess up one. No. I'll pull it up right now. Let's see what let's see what I wrote down. <laughs> oh man. Every time. I already have my lock of the week because um I'm gonna start cashing out some of my uh over under bets. So to give good good juju to that, I already have my uh sorry oh my gosh, yep. there's three Saturday yep. games you, this week. You have it. I said I thought the chart I thought the charges were favored. My bad. You're right. Thank you. Um, I'm going to put that on the loop. Man, that was nice to hear. Uh, we have three Saturday games this week. I know we do. Thursday, we Saturday, Thursday, Sunday, Monday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yep. Yep. And, and then no the more fall, buys. No more buys. And then the week of Christmas, there's also... So, foreshadowing a little bit. Christmas is on a Sunday. Um, the maj- The majority of games will be on Saturday that week. Um, oh, there, really? there, there will be a three game slate on Christmas, which one of them is the Broncos versus the Rams, um, which is just awful, but that just thinking ahead. Um, all right. What's your lock of the week, man? That's gonna be nice. I'm working overtime on the 24th. I'm just going to watch, uh, I'm just going to watch NFL football all day. All right. Okay. What's your lock of the week? I want the Falcons plus four. Okay. Two what, teams going in different directions. Plus four and a half. I'll give you that. Oh, plus four and a half. Okay. With a, a new quarterback. Yeah. Ritter. Desmond Ritter. I need the Falcons to win one more game to cash out my over under bet on them. Yep. So I think this is the game. All right. Here. I'm going to take. Oh, I, I'm up one week. I don't want that. Um, da, da, da. This first time looking at these this week. Give me, give me, give me the man. There's some big spreads. Sheesh. Um, you got a good one there. Uh, I keep trying wanting to bet again. Bet the buck here, but they're so bad. It's um give me uh Tennessee plus three on the road at Charger. I think they're in for a bounce back game. Okay. We're both taking underdogs this week. That's new. Mm-hmm. What is the first uh spread? And I keep going to the Christmas games. I keep scrolling down too far. <laughs> I'm like, these spreads suck as I just keep scrolling down. Um, how about... Oh, I want to change my lock of the week. Sorry. No, never mind. I'll keep it. I'll keep it. Never mind. I'll stop. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not playing that game. Um, I'm going to shake my phone. <laughs> All right. God, these spreads just fucking suck. Um, all right. Washington, four and a half point favorites at home against the Giants. I would like the Giants. Is okay, this take... Two out of the last three weeks for them? Yes. So you'll take the Giants oh. plus four and a half? Yes. Okay, I'll take Washington. Um, how about we'll do the Monday night game? I'll take the Packers minus seven against the okay. Rams. I will take the fighting Baker Mayfield. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. And the one that I think is... you really like it when I call him the fighting whatever backup yeah, quarterback exactly. is playing for them. And this one I'm good with either way. Um, you can have your choice. Uh, the Jets are one point favorites at home against the Lions. 
Oh, it shows it even on ESPN. Um, I want the Jets. Jets minus one. Okay, I'll take the Lions plus one. All right. Um, these shows will probably start to get slightly quicker just because there's less to recap. Um, yep. <clears throat> man, what a great season. Um, this year has really sucked for fantasy. Um, so many injuries, so much inconsistency, so much not knowing what the hell these uh, coaches are going to do. And uh, the whole preseason wrinkle has really thrown us for a loop. But thank you guys for sticking with us and playing. Yeah, we're off to the off to the promised land. Three weeks to go. Grab that jersey. Grab that suck up cup. Um, hope the best for everybody. Good luck. And good luck to those bottom four teams. Uh, two weeks to prove you are not one of the worst two teams in the league. Yeah. Go, yep. Cup jersey. Suck up cup. Someone go get theirs. Cup, 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 cup. This is the end. <laughs>